All right, first of all, um, thank you very, very much for having me, Rod. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you all for coming and uh, hearing me speak. Um, I got uh, 20 minutes or so, and I'm used to talking for about two hours. So I put some slides together, and who knows if I'm even going to follow them. So, um, but, but they're there to try to guide me. So um, just so you know, I'm not a registered dietitian, so I don't fall under that camp. I fall under the biology camp. I have a um, degree from the University of Michigan, my Bachelor of Science, that I got uh, way back in 1997. So I always take a biological view of things, and I don't get the, uh, usually the influence from a standard um, food pyramid kind of stuff. So just a little bit about me. Who am I? Who is that guy? Um, I focus on a keto paleo style of eating and dieting. So what exactly does that mean is I've combined a couple of different ideologies of eating foods that we evolved with, but then shifting them towards a ketogenic uh, plan. And just so you know, the, the big guy on the, well, let's see, it would be on your guys' left. That is who is still standing here, okay? I was a 250-pound power lifter, and I like to eat everything in sight. So for those of you that can relate to it, I have a lot of relatability to this, okay? So I'm not that guy that's always just been that fit guy from 20 years old and all the way up. And I'm older now. I'm, I'm 40, oh my God, 44, <laughs> shooting down the barrel of 45. When I decided to make this change, I was later in life, much like a lot of us, much like a lot of the people that come through the door of my gym. I'm, I'm one of those guys that looked in the mirror or had a wake-up call and said, look, there's a problem. You are not uh, immortal anymore. You're in your mid to late 30s. You're not in your 20s anymore. Something's going to have to change. Otherwise, you're on the fast road to diabetes or any other of the health implications. And during a routine um, physical with my doctor, he looked at me and said, Jamie, you know, there's a direct correlation between belly fat and heart disease. And I'm like, who is he talking to? <laughs> you know, I'm this big power lifter. He knows I work out. I've had this doctor forever. And, and I thought about that a lot, especially since it was about the time my kids came along. I started a little later in life having my kids. And they were little, and I started thinking, you know what, that, that was a pretty powerful statement. So I'd always worked out, so I thought, hey, as long as I'm a drug-free athlete, I'm going to be fine. And, and I brought up uh, to, uh, to some of my lifting partners, I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to lean out again and uh, you know, maybe get my six-pack back. And, and it was met with roars of laughter. Okay, so I was the epitome of that cartoon that you see going around Facebook, where the guy's looking in the mirror, and he's overweight, but it looks he's this ripped guy. Um, that's, that's where I was. I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm still that GFH guy, the guy that just eats everything in sight. So when I'm up here speaking, don't think I'm just this guy that has always been on this healthy biological program. I made through a lot of these changes that maybe you guys are looking for, okay? Coming from a standard American diet to making some changes to be healthy for either yourselves or your kids or whatever reason you have to be healthier and live longer. Maybe you had someone tell you you had type 2 diabetes and you had no clue that that was coming down the pike. So, just really quick, I mentioned that I do the keto paleo thing. And, and for those of you who are kind of confused or maybe learning your way the difference between what's a paleo diet, what's a keto diet, a paleo diet is like I said, it's food that we ate through our whole evolution or uh, the concept is anything that we could hunt or gather while we were uh, through our evolutionary years. A ketogenic diet, which I'm assuming the majority of you know what this is by now, but I like to restate this stuff. I like to repeat, 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 just in case there's someone trying to figure that out, is a diet in which you adjust your macromolecules, which are fat, protein, and carbohydrate, to a point, to a point where you put your body in a state of nutritional ketosis. Okay, so let's just get that out there. A lot of people come to my uh, talks and then they get confused on the two. So if you're new to this, there you go. So what is the paleo diet? We just said that. Like I said, I got slides. Who knows if I'm going to follow them or not. Anything that you could hunt or gather or a natural human diet. When I first started down this pathway, I was introduced to paleo first. Okay, and I noticed a lot of the benefits of it. 
less, less inflammation, better blood profiles, weight loss, and faster recovery in my training. Okay, and those were some of the things that I was looking for as an athlete. I was getting older, the gains were coming slower, the kids in the, my competition were coming up fast behind me. Some of the main points in a paleo diet, or what you would want to do to help with this optimal health program, is a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of foods out there, low carb or not, that may have some anti-nutrients in them. Anti-nutrients are things that may help with um, mineral absorption. Some of the anti-nutrients or protein mimicry in some of these plants may also help with inflammatory diseases. Okay, and then that's the camp I started with. Um, so a lot of that's skipping out grains and dairy. Okay, and, and so that's where I started with all this. And then one of the biggest arguments you get if you are not in the ketogenic world is, you know, where do I get my carbs and vitamins? Okay, so there's this whole outside perimeter of the grocery store that people walk right through to get the Twinkies. That's where you would make your argument that you could get some healthy, nutritious foods. A lot of vitamins in there. So one of the other big arguments that we had, and it's big in the paleo camp, is as from an evolutionary aspect, we didn't have any dairy. Okay, I want you to think about that for a minute and how much sense that makes. You're standing on the edge of the savanna. You see this herd of cattle with horns at about 2,000 pounds. You see the baby cow going to town thinking milk. You're thinking that's a good idea. No, at no point did we ever think that walking into that herd of animals was a good idea. Keep in mind, this was pre-bucket era too. If you can visualize that, this was not happening. Evolution was not going down that route. We did not have that. So, and the reason I bring that up and the reason I focus on that is when I work with athletes or a lot of my clients that may be just trying to lose body fat, some of them will come to me and I don't push them either way and I don't push them hardcore either way because at this point I consider myself um, a keto paleo um, elitist. Okay, and I didn't start there, and it's not fair to make someone start there. So I talk to them about the differences, and sometimes I say, you know what, paleo diet might be a great place for you to start, maybe not going full keto paleo. Someone also says, well, maybe ketogenic's a better way for me to go, I'll start ketogenic. And that will involve, you know, some of these um, recipes involve a lot of dairy. And some of the problems that I've found with dairy with myself, and with my athletes, is that um, it's, it's, they hit roadblocks as far as weight loss. I myself have noticed a lot of extra fluid retention, and I've also noticed that from an, I would, in my training, my asthma starts creeping back in. Okay, so I have a history of asthma. I had asthma since I was like 12 years old. And when I started down this paleo path and the ketogenic path, those are one of the things that left. Okay. I also had arthritis pretty bad, and some of those things start creeping in if I start getting too loosey-goosey with my dairy. And that's easy to do, right? Because you, you're going paleo or maybe you're going keto. Next thing I know, you're hitting, hey, I need a treat. What does Jamie do for a keto paleo guy do as a treat that keeps him in ketosis but doesn't uh, affect his insulin too much? He goes dairy, right? So he blows out a, a big thing of porchos, which is the... Uh, pork rind equivalent of nachos, or you hit the Starbucks way too often and you're slamming way too much heavy cream and all of a sudden I'm noticing that the kids are beating me. In, uh, and by kids I mean my varsity football team that train at my gym and I don't like that. Okay, uh, Jamie's ego kicks in and I do notice a lot of that with um, when I keep dairy in there. Some of my female clients tend to not be able to lose any of the excess body fat keeping dairy in there. So some of the things that I've done a little bit of research on, and Dr. Cordain has a lot of good references on this as well, is that even though that um, dairy might not affect your blood glucose level, some dairies have an insulin response anyway. And some of the problems, and I've found this with all of my uh, athletes, um, but a good 70 to 80% of them that hit a stalling point as soon as they cut dairy, it goes away. And the only thing I could possibly attribute it to is maybe some of the things in dairy. And like I said, some of it might be this insulin response. Um, 
Some of the other things that I've noticed, like I said, my asthma kicks back in or my arthritis, my joints start feeling creaky again, is that I know that there's a lot of immune, uh, autoimmune stimulating properties in there as well. Okay, That's some of the issues that I've noticed. So if you are gone, going down that ketogenic pathway and you might not notice that the person who joined with you, like usually going with a partner, all of a sudden they're losing a ton and you're not, this might be a consideration for you. Or if you're an athlete, and I'm always talking about all the athletic advantages of being ketogenic, um, better respiratory effects and stuff like that. If you're not feeling that, you may in fact have to be keto paleo and knock out some of the dairy. Um, and I just a little reference in here if you need to look it up. It's Drs. Bartley and um, McLasha. I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but there's a couple bioactive peptides in there that cause an extra secretion in the lungs from dairy. So if you're like me and you're not getting that awesome effect of being super keto or super ketogenic is what I call it, um, and you just can't keep that breathing up, it might be these chasmorphins causing this extra um, fluid in your lungs causing that shortness of breath, okay? I haven't done a ton of research on it, but I have a couple, of, a couple of interesting articles to read through yet. But again, just kind of reiterating what is a ketogenic diet and how, what does that usually look like. And some, of the, some people already don't even know. They've never looked at a nutrition label. Um, my aunt, for instance, definitely just started down a ketogenic pathway because um, she got diagnosed with a breast cancer. And I've been talking to her about the positive effects of cancer. And this woman is almost 70 years old, and she's never flipped over um, a nutrition label in her life and didn't even really know what it was all about. So just so if there's any newbies in here that came here to learn, on the back of that nutrition label there's fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Okay, And adjusting that fat, protein, and carbohydrate to a point where you put yourself in that state of nutritional ketosis. And yes, for some of you this is a ton of repeat. For I know for your newbies this is where you want to go. On that same respect, to just a little plug here, I developed an app for newbies to help find their way. It's called Keto Check. So if you have that person in your life that just can't figure it out, I made a real easy app that you can just type in those nutritional values. And at a glance, it's going to give you a ratio because some campaigns in the epileptic world will go after ratios and some of the cancer institutes, percentages and your grams. So that's going to be a real useful tool. The next version of it that's coming out, hopefully by the end of this week, you'll be able to check a whole plate of food. So you'll be able to go six ounces of chicken, one cup of broccoli, two tablespoons of olive oil, hit the button, and at a glance you'll be able to see what your ratios are, what your grams are, and what your percentage is in the pie chart. Okay? So what we talked about that, some of that benefits of, athletic benefits of being ketosis, and it's they say recover faster, but it's not actually recovering faster as you actually produce less oxidative stress in a state of nutritional ketosis. So you actually create less damage as you're going, if that makes any sense. So I used to think, ah, I feel great and I can recover in like a, a, a drop of a hat. Um, it's not. It's actually that you're actually beating yourself up best, better because it's a more efficient metabolic pathway. Um, more stored energy to, for those of you that are new to this. So if you're following the uh, glucose pathway or using sugar as a molecule, you have about 2,000 kilocalories of stored energy between the liver and some of your muscle cells. If you actually switch over to a fat burning metabolism, you'll have upwards of 40,000, right? And that's one of the things that I noticed. Is there any runners in here? Long distance runners? Okay, so you're familiar with the term bonking. So what's usually going on then is that you burn through that 2,000 kilocalories that you have stored. Your brain's trying to switch over to nutritional ketosis on the fly. You have that drop in blood pressure. You all have to do this while running, is it 26.2? 26 point, I, Jamie, not runner, power lifter. Um, <laughs> run 26.2. CrossFit too, but I still not don't get into the running. Um, so that's your body trying to flip over on a fly. Some of the advantages of some of these athletes are finding out, and I know the Vespa group is doing a lot with this, is starting the race in nutritional ketosis. Okay? That's one of the other areas that I find with my athletes. I can do an hour of power lifting, an hour of CrossFit, get a drink of water and go again. Just like that. I just don't get beat up. And longevity in ketosis. 
If you get to about a six month mark and you stay in nutritional ketosis for that and you're a competitive athlete, it's almost like you switch over to another level. And I've actually talked to Steve Finney about that last year and we got some theories on why that happens. Okay, but it's a prolonged time in ketosis. All right, and I just want to wrap up real quick with one other thing. Uh, this is one of my most popular blog posts, and this is what my current project is going to be. Um, I wrote a blog post last year called Chasing Ketones because I notice a lot of my athletes will do really well on a, for, on a um, program that I designed for them, and they have a ton of benefits. A perfect example is Todd comes up to me and he says, Jamie, I've lost 45 pounds. I feel great. My blood work's turned around. I want to start tracking my ketones. Where can I get one of those meters? And I'm thinking, Todd, why? Well, you know, I really want to dial this in, blah, blah, blah. I said, Todd, you just told me you lost a ton of weight. You're still losing weight. Your blood pile turned around and you feel great. What do you need to know at that point? Okay. But I also realize that there is a lot of metabolic reasons to have out there. So I've started uh, last year, year and a half ago, I did an N equals one with the effects of different substrates on your body and its ability to produce ketones. And the way I did this was I've been in a state of nutritional ketosis for, well, I was, I think I'm always in ketosis. Um, and what I would do is a 24-hour fast, and then I'll do initial test. I'll do uh, urinalysis with the P-strips. I'll do the beta-hydroxybutyrate with a blood meter, and I'll take acetone readers, readings. Take initial readings, take uh, a, a prescribed amount, let's say two tablespoons of olive oil, test at certain intervals after to see how it affects all three of those things. Okay, so because I was just kind of curious as to, like I said, I'm not a big believer in chasing ketones, but I do realize that in some areas, elevated ketones has some advantages for, ther for therapeutics, especially epileptics, because it's beta-hydroxybutyrate is a signaling hormone. So I wanted to see if there was actually any advantages by taking different substrates that have different variations of medium-chain triglycerides in them. So I went down a list, and I che ended up checking... Um, uh, olive oil, coconut oil, MCT oil, and then uh, one of the exogenous ketones. And I did this in certain intervals, and I ended up finding out that a really good olive oil raised them the both across the board. Okay, So that led me to my next um, thing. Is everybody familiar with the glycemic index, right? All right, so there's a lot of people who believe in that. So I eat this. This affects my blood sugar. How? And these are these tables that are okay because there's a couple of holes in it. One, it doesn't incorporate meals. Who eats 100 grams of just this? So and in a lab, it makes great sense. In the real world, it doesn't make a ton of sense. So take, taking that information I've had, I've already started a test group, test groups, and we're establishing the ketogenic index. And what I plan to do with this is an online database, we've already started the groundwork on, where I take these test groups and we go through these substrates after 24-hour fast. We list age, gender, weight, history, blah, blah, as much information as we can to give people an idea of, okay, I'm in this camp raising my blood ketones or my acetone via breath is important to me for X reason. What traditionally has, has it helped other people with? And it's going to take in um, consideration load, so a, and a, uh, I'm sorry, a ketogenic load and a ketogenic index. It raised it this high for how long? And this person was, you know, she was about the same age and everything that I was, and that's how it affected her. Is that a perfect controlled lab? No, but everyone that I've had on this diet hasn't lived in a lab. So my goals are is to just have a great resource for people who are, might be in this camp, okay? So that's all I have to say. I have a blog up at uh, keto-paleo.com. I just launched ketodaddy.com, and what I'm trying to do for you guys is create an online resource for all things keto. So if you want keto t-shirts, if you want to know what all the events are coming up, if you want to buy a list of all the products or find a one-stop shopping for blood meters, ketonics, um, different, say if you're into different exogenous ketones, or if you want, um, 
you know, some of the stuff out here, like um, Tracy's got her um, ketology broth. Um, those are the things that I got on my plate right now. So thank you very much. That's all I had to say.